As Nigeria celebrates her 62nd anniversary, conversations have leaned towards the preparation of its forthcoming elections in 2023 whilst explaining the number of challenges bedeviling the nation. From insecurity to inflation, rising unemployment, continued closure of our tertiary institutions, mass exodus of medical personnel, brazen corruption, the list goes on of complaints that have left a sound taste in the mouth of our citizens. In recent years, young people have amplified their voices as well as their roles in politics and decision making with movements such as Not Too Young to Run, which sought to involve more youth in politics, the NSAS campaign, which uh, became a global police uh, brutality, a global movement against police brutality, and several other awareness drives that have seen more young people interested in politics. Indications suggest that the 2023 elections uh, would be the most keenly contested since 1999, with more youth participation than in previous years. On the other hand, there abounds a number of young people seeking, to, uh, seeking migration rather, to foreign countries with hopes of a better life. The question that then comes to mind uh, are really is what is the Nigerian dream and how can we actualize this dream? How key is the 2023 elections you know, with regards to you know, achieving this Nigerian dream or even the survival of, Niger of uh, Nigeria as a country? And also, are Nigeria's youth ready? for 2023 um you know earlier rita was uh, speaking uh, about uh, you know the of course a uh, number of people who seem to be very very vocal now on social media with regards to the elections and you know better nigeria and how you know this you know well there's still conversations about whether that would translate to the electoral uh, process itself you know and in my for me i really just you know wonder you know why there's still any doubt because um there the the social media conversations you know as we have seen in the last couple of weeks and couple of months have obviously uh, translated to these rallies that we get to see on the streets uh, these people don't meet up in the marketplace you know, and decide to go on rallies these are all conversations that start all on social media and so um, these you know for me it's just really a clear sign that you know it, it definitely will be more than just social media conversations there's Absolutely. more and more and more people who are eager to vote and eager to be a part of the electoral process. I remember INEC also declaring that they had registered a pretty, you know, a, a higher number of new um, uh, voters, voters um, regist uh, registrants, you know, this period. Um, you know, a lot more than they had, you know, in the past. Even if, yes, you know, there's still calls for people to go pick up their, their voters' cards and so, some of all of that. But this morning we have uh, someone joining us uh, to have uh, this discussion. Of course, this morning we are going to be joined by Reno Duala, the project director of Hub NG, a human rights platform defending the rights of young people and advocating against as well as documenting, documenting state violence in Nigeria. Good morning, Reno. Thank you very much for joining us. Reno, do we have you joining us this morning? I mean, of course, whilst we are trying to connect with Renew, I think the conversations we'll be asking, or the important conversations we should be asking are, first of all, is there a Nigerian dream? And what is the Nigerian dream? We hear, for example, people talking about the American dream. Martin Luther King did speak about, you know, having the American dream. How, how, how you know, much that dream has been achieved is still subject to conversation. But what is the Nigerian dream? The unfortunate thing is if you ask a young person, I remember asking someone, what is the Nigerian dream? And he said the Nigerian dream is to Jackba. Yeah. You know, that's... that's there, there is that. You know, if we, on, on a, on a um, comedic level, you know, a lot of people would say it's really just to make money, um, whichever way that you can make it. Um, but I, I would also love to hear what the Nigerian dream is from the people who are trying to be president. Everyone who is trying to hold elective, uh, you know, office, you know, right from the, um, you know, the um, uh, federal level to the state level to the local government level, national assembly level. What do they think is the Nigerian dream? What goals do they have? In what ways do they see and do they mentally describe the Nigeria of their dreams? Because those are the things that would determine whether they really understand where they want to put Nigeria and where um, you know, Nigerian, the young Nigerians want to be. There's millions and millions of people who are extremely passionate in the last couple of weeks and the last couple of months about being able to build a better Nigeria. And if you do not find a candidate that resonates entirely with what those people are thinking and what they are saying, um, you know, they, you almost, you know, would never be able to, you know, to, um, you know, come together, you know, and make that dream possible. Um, 
I remember also there's um, you know a video that went viral a couple of you know I think it was over the weekend also when a, um, a young man who was complaining about being unemployed since he graduated has been you know graduated for about five years now so and he's still not been able to get a job you know he was earning thirty thousand naira um, and still not being able to get a job um, and he was of course very very passionate about what he wanted you know to see in his new Nigeria from 2023. Absolutely. So do these people have permanent voters cards? Those are very legitimate questions, but they've said that they do. Absolutely. You know, and when you speak with them, for our correspondents who are on the street during the rallies and asking these questions, they all, you know, agree that they do. All right. Now we are, of course, uh, looking into this conversation. Joining again uh, this time, we're joined by Renu Odwala, the project director of HubNG, a human rights platform defending the rights of young people and advocating against as well as documenting state violence in Nigeria. Good morning, Renu. Thank you for joining us. And I think a, a great way to start the conversation would be, is there a Nigerian dream? And if yes, what is this Nigerian dream? Good morning, um, News Central. I hope you can hear me. Loud and clear. Me? Yes, loud and clear. Thank you very much. So I, I overheard your question, you know, and, and the contributions and the way you said that the Nigerian dream for some people um, is to Jakba. Is there a Nigerian dream? Yes, there is a Nigerian dream. And I think that that dream is the uh, ego better dream. You know, the ones our parents still echo by saying Nigerians will be better. That Nigeria where injustice will be a thing of the past where the common man, the children of nobody, can become important people, you know, without connections. Where you and I can live without having to think about Takba, to another man's land. In Nigeria, that um, our best brains will not be leaving to work in other countries because there's unemployment, because there's underemployment. In Nigeria, that will prioritize education, that will prioritize health care. In Nigeria, where our politicians will not start to repair roads few months to the election because they think Nigerians are fools. In Nigerians, where our vote counts, you know, a Nigeria that we have a government by the people, of the people, for the people. There are many instances here, but then, yes, there's a Nigerian dream. The problem is that our Nigerian dream has and is still being killed off by our leaders, by the people who voted into power, by our police officers, our security agencies, in essence, you know, by the Nigerian system. So instead of a Nigerian dream, what we now have is the Nigerian crime scene, you know, where our dreams have been shattered, where our dreams have been killed off dead, where our countrymen, our own colleagues prefer to face racism in Western countries rather than lose their lives in a country where their lives do not matter. In Nigeria, where students have been at home for almost a year, you know, where children and women are now shields of war, where religious intolerance is the other uh, uh, of the day, and where leaders are looting money in the name of government, where police officers and army, just like the video you showed, uh, can shoot citizens and try to cover it up with the help of politicians. That is the Nigeria we have today. All right, I, I want to talk about the renewed energy among the youths. You know, every, you know, everyone can definitely see it. Um, where would you say this energy is coming from? And you know, for those who link it to the events of October 2020, um, um, would you say that they might be right? Well, uh, I, I would say that I would agree with you that there is a renewed energy. Um, where is that coming from? I would say that that energy is coming from the hope that it is possible. It is possible to have a working country. Uh, it is possible for Nigeria to be among the nations for progress, instead of being constantly in the news for terrorism or for corruption. Uh, I think that the energy is coming from, like the uh, previous question, the Nigerian dream, that we can have a sane nation for ourselves. It's not hard mathematics. Nigerians have been through a lot. Just like you said, in the last seven years, the inflation, a lot of killings and all of that. Now there is another generation who have become recently aware of their responsibilities to join hands to make this nation work. And even those who have traveled out um, are still thinking that way because for us, Nigeria is not a physical location per se. It is a state of mind. We all carry Nigeria in our heart wherever we go. So whether it's those in the diaspora, whether it's those that are preparing to jack back, whether it's those who don't have means to jack power, or those who have stayed, uh, made up their mind to stay and switch on the generator, you know, the dream remains constant to have a working country. And if you ask me where the energy, again, is coming from, I would say it's from the Nigerian resilience, that we can make things work, that we don't have to resign ourselves to choosing between the devil and the blue sea or, or, or of politicians who waste away our youth. It comes from seeing your own age group, you know, being short, why demanding for a chance to survive and the government denying it comes from having to remind your own government that black lives matter when ironically you are in the largest black nation on earth 
it comes from our own willingness not to be sidelined to being uh, political talks or ballot, snatch, ballot snatchers, you know, but rather we want to play a prominent role for our future. That is where the energy is coming. All right, still speaking about this renewed energy that's exemplified by nationwide marches, online conversations, PVC drives, and so on. Now, some of these actions are being belittled by statements inferring that a lot of these youths do not actually have PVCs. Now, you get to interact with a lot of young people. What is your observation in this regard? And what would you say is the role of the Nigerian youth come 2023 elections? Well, you see, looking at statistics and the data we have before us, I'd say that the assertion is wrong. The assertion that uh, they don't have PVC, they're just going on marches. These people don't have PVC. The assertion is wrong. In 2019, we had 84 million plus registered voters, and 51 point, I think 11 percent of those young of those voters who were registered were young people, and that translates to about 40 million plus young people who have their PVCs. And looking at the new registration this year as well, young Nigerians uh, led the registrations with uh, over 8 million voters, the 12 million registrations. So with this statement, uh, with this rather, with this data, the statement that these young people, they don't have PVC, is a statement that is aimed at reducing our confidence. It is aimed at reducing our energy in the upcoming election. It is a well-known trick from the playbook of those who said, they are lazy you. They are, yeah, they are keypad warriors. They, don't, they, they, they won't do anything. Okay, we can argue that the registrants um, are not showing the power of their numbers. We, we can argue that these people are not known to exercise their civic duties. Many of them, uh, their, their numbers is not translating to votes during elections. And those courses are not far-fetched. We, if we decide to go into those courses, we'll probably spend the day here. But the statement that they don't have their PVCs is very wrong. All right, and of course, you know, I also want you to speak with, um, you know, in response to those who complain about the lack of tolerance uh, among, uh, you know, the young, you know, online commentators, um, you know, of course, with regards to those having opposing political views or supporting different parties. Uh, they've been called bullies and intolerant and, you know, all sorts of names. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Well, this issue has been uh, a trending one, you know, in the past few months, especially as the election approaches. For me, I think I'll start by saying that if we do not tolerate uh, opposing views, then we are stifling political conversation. And this would end the social change and we desperately need change as Nigerians. However, you know, um, Pointing or pinning, rather, lack of tolerance on, on young people makes me want to ask a question. Does it mean that the older folk have done better in this regard? Recently, we had a presidential candidate who said the supporters of a party will labor to death. You know, the, the tagging of intolerance on a particular demographic, like young people, is a type of profiling. That being said, um, what exactly do we tag bullying as well? Is it a pushback against the propaganda that politicians have always had monopoly on in our media space that we tag bullying? Uh, also, I, I think that the same people who are, many of these people who say these guys are bullies are also supporters of the politicians who have often sponsored violence during our election. And so they do not have the moral rights to call other people bullies. So, like, like I said, is it, is it a pushback against the propaganda or the heated discussions, you know, around, around election period? I think that I, I would say that our goal uh, regarding this election, especially in the media space, should be that propaganda, should be that false information, should be that fake news are effectively countered by the media, truth or fact-checking. And we should always push our politicians. It is, it is important, you know, for interviewers, journalists, citizens, people in the civic space, to start pushing our politicians to set better example. Like I said, they participate in violence, they participate in election tampering, they sponsor talks to go to the polling unit. Recently, uh, I think yesterday, the supporter of, a, uh, of the Labour Party uh, candidate was attacked in, in Lagos State in Oshodi, and two of them had to be taken to the hospital. They were attacked by people from opposition parties. So we need to, you know, start to tell our, our push our politicians that they need to refrain from making statements that could alienate members of different tribes, 
members of different religions tell their supporters to run responsible campaigns and not yeah. last but not the least be the example be the change that we seek thank you um Rinu, thank you so much for joining us it's, it's you know the month of october in five seconds we can't talk about the fact that, you know, we, we can't make reference or cannot but make reference to what happened in October 2020. In as few seconds as possible because we've run out of time. How do you feel? Uh, I, I feel demoralized. I don't feel like my country has rewarded the efforts of the young people who participated in the NSA movement and who are still uh, opening their hearts that the killers uh, of their colleagues, of the peaceful protesters, will be held accountable. I do not feel happy, uh, and I, like I said, very, very demoralized that those killers, who are not ghosts, by the way, these people are not fictitious characters. They have not been held accountable, and police brutality is still very much on the increase in Nigeria. All right. Thank you very much, Reno Duala, for speaking with us. Uh, of course, so we're looking forward to always having conversations with you and we'll be reconnecting with you again pretty soon.